Fan life, fan life, fan life. Fan life, fan life, fan life. It's just incredible. TV. Yes, it is December, so there we go. I'm getting all uh, Christmasized in here. Questions I get about issues, problems, people always ask me. Uh, they always start a question with the uh, with the words, um, "What? What if? What do you do?" in this situation. Because you live in an RV, what would you do if this happened or if that happened? And Actually, most of the things I get asked don't really have anything to do with RV life, specifically. So it kind of perplexes me when I get these questions. Like, for example, Justin, what do you do if someone knocks on your door? I'm like, huh? Wait a minute. If you live in a house, what do you do when someone knocks on your door? What's the difference? Or, Justin, where do you do your laundry? Same place, millions of people in cities everywhere do their laundry, the laundromat. Uh, <laughs> you know, some of the stuff is really, really obvious, but uh, uh, I don't really see it as relating to RV life so much. Uh, another one is, um, don't you ever feel vul vulnerable that someone's gonna break in? What would you do? Well, wait a minute, if you live in a apartment or a basement suite or a house don't you feel vulnerable that someone could break in even more so because you leave that house to go to work eight nine hours a day and no one's there where in my case my house is parked right at work so to me it's a lot safer so I don't understand that argument even parking overnight like on the street some people think that's more dangerous but to me Man, I've talked to a lot of people who live in RVs and vans and women, especially women that do it, they feel safer because they can move. They're no longer vulnerable anymore, stuck in one location if somebody's after them or somebody wants is stalking them or is trying to break in, they can keep an eye on your place. If you're in a house that you move every day, how the hell is the criminal going to find you? Or, or your stalker or anything like that. So in, in a lot of ways, again, this has nothing to do with an RV life. To me, it's like if you ask me, <laughs> whether I feel uh, afraid that someone's going to break in, I don't think that there's any more or less chance of that happening, no matter what kind of house you live in. Uh, and probably less so in a vehicle. In a vehicle, it might be just more petty theft, somebody trying to break in and steal the change off your dashboard or something like that. To be honest, when the curtains are closed in an RV and you're parked on the street, though, you'd have to be really fucking stupid to break in. I think that's a huge deterrent right there. What would you do if you had a breakdown and you're traveling and somewhere and, 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 and your van had to go into a shop? I'm like, well, what if you were traveling in a car and it broke down and your car had to go into a shop? You'd probably have to pay for a motel and, and to get the shop to fix your car. Same thing would happen in a van. Uh, <laughs> the difference is, if you're traveling in your RV, you probably have a lot of extra money left over because you're not staying in a motel or hotel every single night, only if it became necessary. Besides that, you can get CAA. Uh, most people who travel a lot have CAA insurance on their on their RVs, and if you get the CAA RV, of course, uh, that will even cover your pots and pans and your living expenses while your vehicle is being repaired. So again, not an RV specific worry or something that I would ever worry about. Again, most of these things are things that I've never even thought about, and I've been doing this for a decade and a half plus. So when I get the questions, I, it, I think that people are asking these questions because they're almost looking for a reason not to do this lifestyle, and so they come up with come up with unlikely scenarios in their head and go, Justin, wh what if this happens? And they freak out about it. These people really overthink. You can't live like that. Just, I hate to say YOLO, but YOLO. Uh, you can't prevent everything. Uh, just live your day, uh, live your life day by day. And if something happens, deal with it when it happens. But anything that would happen living in your van or traveling or even just living in the city in your van like I do, I don't think is really any different than the worries that the average homeowner would have or apartment dweller or anything like that. There's really no extra worries aside from hey where do i fill up my water this week you know you know what i mean like not any real problems or real emergencies and then there's the the obvious questions uh like well how do you stay how do you stay cool in the summer or warm in the winter and i've gone over this millions of times and of course right now it's it's not even that cold out but it's chilly enough that i got this guy running and uh, i absolutely love it 
doing some big renovations to my kitchen soon. So I'm finally going to finish off the relocation of my wood stove and uh, finish off a lot of the wall decorating. So you guys are going to you're going to like what I have up my sleeve coming soon. Well, Justin, uh, don't you get tired of driving that every day to commute? And again, I don't have to commute. I can park near work sometimes. It's, it's, it's convenient. And to be honest, my job is driving a truck that's uh, twice as big as this RV. So this seems like a small car to me. When I'm done my shift and I get into this, uh, I used to drive Class A's and big Class E's around. So again, this is a very small vehicle in my opinion. Uh, no problem at all. And of course the, uh, well, where do you park? Well, you know, cities are big. There's uh, Metro Vancouver is like two and a half or almost three million people. It's a, a lot of cities and districts, a lot of streets, a lot of places to park. I, I think that the people that would ask something like that, I mean, there's no, you can park, there's thousands of places you could park overnight. But I think that the people that ask that are really the type of people that are doing the same thing every day of their lives. They're in the same routine. They live in the same place and they drive a car every morning to work and they, they don't go anywhere else or do anything else in their life except maybe hit the occasional drive through on their way home from work. You know what I mean? So they don't really explore their own city, really. Um, but there are countless industrial and commercial areas you can park overnight, even some residential areas. Again, I don't recommend parking in front of people's houses for more than one night at a time at the most. Uh, I've talked about that before. Van life etiquette, right? Just be respectful. But there is absolutely no shortage. I've gone to places in Metro Vancouver that I've never been in my life before and I've never had a problem finding a place to park within five or ten minutes. There's always somewhere to park. And it's the same in any city or town that I've driven to. I always find a place pretty pretty fast actually. And the most, uh, the most I've ever had is a knock on my door. Uh, somebody saying, oh you can't park here overnight or something. Just move on. No big deal. So again, not really a problem problem. Uh, it would be the same to me as if you were traveling to another city in a car, where would you park that car? <laughs> you know, so it's not really a, a van problem in my opinion. I even see a lot of the regular RV dwellers around town. Um, I see them rotating from parking spots to parking spots as I drive by them uh, all the time. And I see even sometimes on major route, uh, major routes with Lots of heavy traffic and buses going by. You know what you get used You don't even notice it after a while. Uh, buses going by. And that brings me to another question. What about the noise? Doesn't the noise bother you or traffic or anything? And again, millions of people live in urban environments, uh, in apartments crammed next to each other with busy roads and laneways and side streets. And the difference is with the RV, it's your choice. When you're stuck in an apartment, you can't get away from all that noise. And it can be horrible. My ex-girlfriend, for example, uh, she uh, had a alley-facing apartment, second floor, but it was just horrid in the morning as soon as the traffic started getting heavy. And the street across the street from her was a main street too with buses and all the commuters in the morning and so you couldn't sleep in even if you tried. It was horrible. And uh, every Thursday morning when the garbage trucks would come down the alley and the big beepers and the big bangs and clunks and wow, and she's paying a lot of money for the privilege to live with all that noise and there's nothing you can do about it. Whereas with the RV, it's like, well, if I choose to park on a busy street tonight, whatever, I'll deal with it. I'll just stick my head under the pillow and tomorrow maybe I'll park somewhere a little quieter. You see, again, it's not a van life problem. I think the point of this video is a lot of the things that people uh, are asking me about that they think are problems are really not problems. And they're really no different, if even less of a problem, than people that live in houses and apartments. So again, don't overthink things. Life is great. Life is simple. And if you overthink things and worry about things all the time, you're going to be 95 one day and you're going to die and you're going to go, damn it, I didn't live. So keep on rocking in the free world, everyone. You are watching Just Incredible TV. Want to see more? Become a patron and see exclusive content. Plus, see new, just incredible videos before anyone on YouTube. Head over to patreon.com slash jcredtv and keep on rocking in the free world.